There are two main ways you can promote your app in Google Ads. First is creating an app ad extension, and you can apply it to your ads in the search network. The only problem with this is that your extensions are not guaranteed to show up every single time on your text ads. So if you want to have a dedicated app promotion campaign, you will have to use Google Ads Universal App Campaigns. And a lot of parts of these campaigns seem pretty hands-off, but we still can control many elements during the campaign setup. So let's jump into Google Ads and we'll go over a step-by-step -step setup of a universal app campaign. As with any campaign that we create within Google Ads, we have to select a specific goal. I think this one is pretty straightforward, right? We need to choose app promotion. To make things even easier, there's only one campaign type, and then you can choose between two subtypes. If you're looking to get in front of new users who haven't used your app before, you would want to leave it as the default app install subtype. Or if you want to get users to re-engage with your app, you can go down and then choose the app engagement option. But I'm looking for new, so I want app installs. Now for certain accounts, there actually could be additional subtypes to choose from, but not all of these subtypes are available to every advertiser. So the first option would be for advertisers whose app isn't out yet, because certain advertisers can create an app campaign encouraging users to pre-register for the app. This option is only available for Android devices, and that app pre-registration option would be an additional subtype. Now, if you are eligible to run these types of campaigns, you will need to set up the pre-registration portion in the Google Play Council. And there's an additional caveat where you need to have that app launched within 90 days after you start your pre-registration process in the Play Council. Not typical, but it is an option. Another option for app campaigns, which is not gonna be in most accounts, is gonna be an app campaign for open testing. If you want to get users into the app to do any alpha or beta testing, you can release a test version of your app in the Google Play Store. Again, this is another one that's only available for Android devices. And just like the pre-registration option, you'll need to set up the open test in the Google Play Council. So the pre-registration and open testing campaigns are really not common. They're not available in all accounts, so I'm not going to dive into those at all today. But after you have your campaign subtype in place, you will need to choose the mobile app platform. And as we can see right here, the options are Android or iOS. They are split between two different campaigns. You cannot merge them together. So since I'm in Google Ads, I'm just going to keep it to Android. Next, you will want to look up your app. I'm just choosing this app for fun. This is a fake run through demo that we're going through here. So let's just keep on going. Click continue. And now we're in the campaign settings. So first, let's get naming our campaign out of the way. Next, we can drop down to location targeting. Another option we do get to control. And if we see this little warning right here, Google tells us that no matter what targeting option we choose, your app will only show in whatever countries your app is available. I'm not gonna go into location targeting because we already have a video going over what you can do with location targeting in Google Ads, and you can check out that video right here. But if you scroll down a little bit, we get to languages. Just looking at my account and browser settings are tied to English, so that was the default, but you can always change it depending on what app you have or what location you are promoting in. Let me just enter a budget really quick, and then we can scroll down to the bidding option. With universal app campaigns, Google fully automates your bidding, but there are optimization levels that we do have some control over. And we can see that by some of the questions that Google is asking, because these questions do impact the type of bid strategy Google will put in place for your app campaigns. So what is the main focus of this campaign? When I was setting up my campaign goals for this app campaign, I was focused on getting new installations, new users. So my focus will be install volume. If I chose app engagement, where I'm trying to get my ads back in front of users who have already downloaded the app just to get them to come and visit and interact again, we would see that go down to in-app actions. I can't optimize for in-app actions if the users haven't downloaded the app yet. If I click out of that and go to the next question, what kind of users do you want to target? And it's the same situation depending on what subtype you chose. In this case, for new installation, we want all users, anyone who would be interested in my app and what my company offers. With in-app actions, you have to have users who already have the app. And as we see in this pop-up right here, we have to make sure conversion tracking is set up so Google knows which actions are actually important within that app. And we will talk about conversion tracking towards the end of the video. If I click off of this, we do have the option to set a target cost per install. Think of this as like a target CPA type bid, but if that's not important to you, you can uncheck the box and move on. If you need to schedule the campaign, there's your start and end dates option. And then we have advanced settings. For app promotion campaigns, the only advanced settings we see is to add a feed. This can be helpful if you're looking to do any other specific targeting that we really can't see within the campaign settings. This is one small way where you can have some control over the users Google may try to target. 
and it may not be as common, so we don't need to go over that one today. So that is a pretty short campaign settings review because that's all we have to control for universal app campaigns. One option that we see in most campaigns is the network where our ads can appear. And that option is not on here because Google Ads also will automate the targeting for this campaign type. So you could be asking, where do your ads appear? Universal app campaigns can show up on the search network, certain queries, especially ones of people literally looking for an app on Google search, there will be app specific ads that can show up on the top of the search network. And besides just Google search, your ads can also appear on Google search partner sites. For Android apps, ads could appear on Google Play search results. There are related app sections within Google Play where your ad could also appear. If you have an Android device and you've been in the Google Play store, you've probably seen the section saying, hey, you may also like this app, that type of phrase. And then there's also those suggestions on the Google Play homepage. Your app ad can also show up on YouTube and the content on particular video watch pages that are related to the content on your app. If you're using the Google Display Network, your app ad could show up on mobile websites. They could show up on other other apps people are using and potentially Gmail. Now Gmail ads are going away in July of 2021. So possibly, and I can't confirm this, those ads may circle back to discovery because discovery campaigns are gonna be the only way we can do Gmail ads in the future. And the last option on where your ads can appear is also going to be just for Android phones and for those devices using English language is going to be discover. And that's a certain placement on the Google search page. But now we know where your ads can appear, let's save and continue and go on to the next step. As a reminder, there's my mobile app. I already named my ad group. So now we can get down to the ad creation portion. And this part's gonna look familiar. If you've done any responsive search ads or responsive display ads, we're used to entering multiple headlines and multiple descriptions. We're giving Google the opportunity to create a variety of combinations of ads, and then based on the performance of each component of the ad, Google will optimize towards the best performing components. You can see we can add up to five headlines that are 30 characters each, and then up to five descriptions that are 90 characters each. I'm gonna paste some in really quick and then jump to the next part just so you don't have to watch me type in all this stuff. Okay, I just took copy that was on the app page on the stores, and put in three headlines and three descriptions. Obviously Google wants five, and we can see in the ad strength, my headlines and descriptions circles are half full. And I'll leave it up to you if you wanna make sure that you're filling out all five, or only wanna include specific messages that are the most important. But now we can scroll down to the next part, which would be adding images. And Google is telling us that we can upload up to 20 images. I don't have 20 images saved, but I'm definitely gonna add a few. So let's go in and add some images. If I go over to this little question mark, this will be the dimensions of the types of images we can add for our universal app campaigns. We see the images have to be a JPEG, ping, or GIF file type. We see the certain file sizes for all the images. And then there's the list of dimensions, and I'm not gonna say every single one of those. You can print screen for your reference. But there are definitely different options out there than our typical image ads that we would create for the display network. I already have a few images saved. Definitely don't have 20 of them, but I'm gonna add a few here and choose my different uploads. Okay, I have four images uploaded. Again, I could upload much more, but these are the only ones I could find within the proper dimensions. Since these are the first images I've uploaded for a particular app campaign, all of them are selected. But let's say you've already had assets within your campaign, you've already run previous app campaigns before, you will be able to go to recently used, and there's a few other images from other demos that we have done. And if I want to, I can select these certain images to use for the campaigns. If I go back here, I've unselected one. If I change my mind, I can easily just highlight it, check the blue box again, check the blue arrow again, and then we can add this. If you have way more than 20 assets within the campaign, you can always go to the Your Assets tab, and it's showing four out of the 20 that we can have. So this will give you a good visual of the ones that you will use for the app ad, again, if you have way more than the 20 that are in your asset bank. But I'm good with these, so I'm gonna save them. Next, we can see that we can add videos. And I kind of covered on this a little bit in a previous video I did and how we can utilize YouTube videos in non-video campaigns. Because we can see right here, I can't just add in like an MP4 file. The video has to be uploaded to YouTube and then we can search for that video URL, the video title, and try to find it and add it to this app ad. So there's one video that I pasted in. Let me go grab another URL. And as I keep pasting different URLs in here, I can then click on them add them to the account, I can keep going. There are a ton of videos on the official account that I could just keep adding. And as I click save, we will see that I can also add up to 20 videos. So 20 different YouTube URLs. 
between all the different elements that we can add to our ad, it is a way for the advertiser to have some sort of control of the message we're putting in front of those users. I don't have any HTML5 ads, but you can add those as well. But if we scroll up here, we get some visuals of how our ads can appear on the placements I talked about within the campaign settings portion of this video. So here's how it could look on the display network. We saw one smaller ad version. There's another option that's pulling in our headline and description. And there we see information and ratings from the Google Play Store. Back to the beginning, so now let's switch to search. If someone's looking for this particular app and they're calling out the app name right in the search bar, this is how our ad can appear. There aren't any variations for the search. This is the only format. So now let's go to YouTube. Don't worry about the error. That's something that my browser is doing. But on YouTube, it runs kind of like a TrueView in-stream ad. It's gonna show one of the four videos that I have added to this particular ad. The user will be able to skip it, but they also have the option to download this particular app. Another way how your ad can appear on YouTube is this particular ad underneath the video on a particular watch page. Just like a discovery ad, this is gonna appear in the feed and could show up within the recommended videos portion, but in this example, you see that we can get the top position, so you can get good visibility. Let's go back up and scoot over a little bit. There's the discover option, and this shows up on Google search results pages, and it is one of the ones that is only available on Android devices. That's exactly why I wanted to pick Android for this campaign demo. And then we have Google Play. This could show up under particular search results. There we see related apps. And then going back to the third variation, it could show up under suggested apps as well. We could go back up, see if we're making Google happy, but it's average. I'm not giving them enough headlines, descriptions, images, or videos. I'm gonna leave that up to you to see what types of assets you wanna test with your ads. But if everything looks good, we can save and continue. And then my campaign is ready and running. So I'm gonna to continue to campaign. And now this one is set to run. If I go back into the ad group, we can see I only get the pencil button to edit the ad. I cannot add different variations. So even if I try to, I'm back in the ad to make those changes. But we can see from the columns right here, once this ad is approved and running, I'll be able to see performance metrics for each of my assets that are in this ad. Let me close some of this for a little bit so it makes it easier to read. And if we go up to columns, I will definitely consider adding the app specific metrics to this particular view so I can see what's actually working within this ad. I understand there are other metrics that we could add, I just wanna get this going. You can see I have the column sorted by asset type. So I'll be able to see if one headline isn't performing well compared to the others, I can go back in, edit the ad, try to test out a different headline to see if I can improve my performance. And the same thing is said for every single other asset type. I'm gonna know which images are probably engaging users the most which video options are better for me on YouTube. This is the type of information I wish we had with responsive display ads. It's actually giving me the exact information I need to make this a better ad where I really don't have to create a ton of different variations to just try and guess. I actually know which portions of my ad are actually working and that's great. Now in terms of what we can do for conversion tracking, since I did add those columns into the mix here, let's head up into our tools and settings and then go into conversions. We can see the second conversion action in this account is the app that I used for this demo. And since I started with an Android conversion, we see that's a separate action. It's from the Google Play Store. And the default category is a download. The download action is for this particular category because remember for the subtype, I wanted new installations. And with the Google Android connection, that is automatically set up for me. I could go and add a new one. And I'm gonna click on app conversions, of course. Now there's a few ways that we could set up conversion tracking. And this is important if you're running iOS campaigns, because now that the iOS 14 update is around, conversion tracking in Google Ads is slightly different. So Google is gonna recommend that you use Google Analytics, and there we see the Firebase option right there, because Firebase will use Apple's framework. And that one is gonna automatically go with their new privacy measures. If you choose that option, you already have it set up within Google Analytics 4. It'll feed everything back into Google Ads if you have that property linked with Google Ads. If I choose the Google Play option, I know I didn't have to do that before. That was done automatically. But this is an option as well if you're just setting up the app extension. I can do installs, which is one action that we definitely wanted to take. But then there's the in-app purchases, and that's the one for the engagement type of campaigns that we would want to track. And then if you are using any third-party app analytics, you can do that as well. But for me, the most common options are now Google Analytics 4 properties and Google Play. 
And for the most part, that's what we can do with a universal app campaign. I ended on conversion tracking because I want to make sure that's stuck in your head of how important that is because conversion tracking is going to help us look at the metrics we have and what assets within our ad are actually performing well. We can then take that information and potentially go back to our settings and potentially adjust the cost per install number if you chose to have that as an option to help affect your bidding. Yes, universal app campaigns are pretty hands-free, but the way you can review metrics for your ad creative actually gives us way more control than you'd think. I still don't consider this a set and forget ad campaign because you see all the different elements we could add and test within our ad at one time, we have a lot of control over what message we're putting in front of that user to see if it's actually making an impact. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.